This video is about completing the square when the a value equals 1. So let's just backtrack a little bit. When we first learned about quadratics, we started with standard form. If we needed to graph the parabola from this form, we had to make a table, and that was kind of a pain. Later, we learned vertex form. So vertex form, this made it a lot easier to graph the parabola because we can just take the opposite of the parentheses and don't change the k value. And we'd have our vertex at hk, and then we can just use our pattern and make our parabola. So the question is, though, what if we have standard form? How can we take standard form and turn it into vertex form? Or if we think about an example, what if we have something in standard form like y equals x squared minus 4x plus 9, and we don't want to make a table? We want to turn that into its vertex form. And that's what completing the square is all about. It's going to let us take something in standard form and change it to vertex form, which has its greatest advantage as graphing the parabola. So let's go ahead and jump right in and see how this process works. So there's our equation, y equals x squared plus 10x minus 5. We want to change this into vertex form so that we could graph it. So the first step is to go ahead and put parentheses around the x squared and the 10x. And then it's always going to be positive at the end. I'm going to leave some space and put my negative 5 on the outside. All right, next step is to focus on this x squared plus 10x. And it is going to be put into a generic rectangle. So putting this in the generic rectangle, I'm going to put the x squared in the upper left corner. And then the key here, the 10x is going to get evenly split between these two squares. And it's going to be plus 5x plus 5x. All right, at this point, we can fill out the outside of our generic rectangle. So how do we get x squared? That would be x times x. And then we'd have x plus 5 to give the 5x's. And now we can figure out what our last square is. 5 times 5 would give you positive 25. And that is referred to as completing the square. Now our plus 25 goes in this blank spot. All right. Now, technically, we've just done something to our equation. So we have to fix that. So we fix that by doing the opposite of what we just did. So we just went plus 25. Now, technically, in this video, our a value is 1. So technically, that's 1 times 25. That's positive 25. So on the outside, we're going to put minus 25. And you can see that I did not do a good job of managing my space here. On the next slide, I'll do better. All right. Now we're ready to just jump from this to our vertex form. So we just simplify. We get y equals. Now we know that that x squared plus 10x plus 25, that is simply x plus 5 squared. And you can see that. You can see that over here. That shows you that x squared plus 10x plus 25 is x plus 5 times x plus 5. Then we just simplify what we had on the outside, which, due to my space limitations, didn't turn out that great. Uh, that negative 5 and that negative 25 simply becomes negative 30. So there you go. We've changed standard form into vertex form. If I wanted to graph it, my vertex would be the opposite of plus 5, negative 5, negative 30. With a y value of negative 30, I don't think I want to graph it, but I could if I wanted to. All right, let's take a look at another one. 
So first step again is to go ahead and rewrite it. Put some parentheses around the first two terms, x squared and the negative 12x. Leave a space plus something and put the plus 40 on the outside. All right, now we are ready to go ahead and make a generic rectangle. And we're going to take our x squared and our negative 12x, and they go in the generic rectangle. But the negative 12x has to be split evenly, divide by 2, and we get negative 6x, negative 6x. Now we're ready to go ahead and just fill in the outside of our generic rectangle. So x times x gives us x squared. We'd have negative 6 here, negative 6 there. And negative 6 times negative 6 would give us positive 36. That positive 36 can go ahead and go inside the parentheses. Now, what do I do to even out my equation here? Because you can't just add whatever you want to one side. Remember, today everything has an a value of 1. So we are technically going 1 times 36, which has a value of positive 36. So we have to do the opposite, minus 36, on the outside. Okay? And next up, we simplify to vertex form. We have x minus 6 squared because this is the same as that. Those are the same thing. So we have that, and then we have positive 40 and negative 36. The positives are winning by 4. So there is our vertex form, which we could figure out our vertex and graph the parabola. If you think you're ready, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. I know that some of those numbers are a little bigger, but it's not that bad. Give it a try and then check your answer. Okay, first step, y equals, put parentheses, and put your x squared plus 22x on the inside, and then leave a space, and put plus 130 on the outside. Then you can make your generic rectangle. And inside top left corner, we have x squared. Uh, we split the 22x and do positive 11x, positive 11x. And then we go ahead and figure out the outside. We've got x times x. We've got positive 11, positive 11. And 11 times 11, 11 squared is 121. So this becomes plus 121. We have to balance it on the outside with a negative 121. And that, again, technically happens because there's a 1 in front of those parentheses. So 1 times 121, 121. Do the opposite. Now we are ready to go ahead and convert this to our vertex form. And we end up with x plus 11 squared, and then when you put the 130 positives, 121 negatives, the positives are winning by 9. All right, here's our last problem. Go ahead and pause the video, work this out, and then hit play to go ahead and check your answer. Okay, we start with y equals parentheses x squared minus 18x plus, leave a space for a number there, put your negative 20 on the outside, okay? Draw your generic rectangle, x squared top left, and then always split your b value. We're technically going negative 18x divided by 2. That's negative 9x, negative 9x. Now you can figure out the outside of this generic rectangle. We have x times x is x squared. We got negative 9s out here. And now we're ready to complete this square. Negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. 
which can now go in our space that we left for it. That's technically a 1 times 81 is positive 81. We have to do the opposite of that, which is negative 81. And now we're ready to just simplify to our vertex form. We end up with x minus 9 squared. And then we have negative 20 and negative 81, negative 101. So now you are able to take standard form, which is not very useful for graphing, and turn it into vertex form, which makes it much easier to graph. Although, uh, good luck coming up with negative 101 for your y value. Most of the time when we're using this and we ask you to graph, it'll not be so big so you can fit it on your graph. All right, that's it.